I would say when it comes to business, you just gotta, you just gotta push through. Hello and welcome to the Top 30 Podcast. This is Gastro Gurus, the show where we dive into the success stories of food and beverage professionals and learn about their journey and fiery passion for the industry. Today we are joined by Ivy Yap, co-founder of Remedy Cocktail Bar. Ivy, a dedicated bartender, has made it her goal to merge classic cocktails and a time-traveling experience in one place, a place of remedy. This is Ivy Yap on Gastro Gurus. First of all, very nice to meet you. Nice and to thank meet you so you. much for making the time. Thank you. So uh, I would like to start by asking you, just um, give us a brief introduction about yourself in the industry or your background, how you got into it. Just a small okay. brief. So uh, I used to be working in Singapore. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was a air stewardess for uh, Singapore Airlines. So um, I've always been into cocktails and stuff like that. And then during COVID, we basically um, we could do something else other than flying because basically we had no flights to go to. So uh, I was like, I ended up in a cocktail bar in Singapore. So uh, that kind of but the interest of opening up one myself at the end of the day. So, uh, like, we, me and my husband, we used to basically um, try to make drinks at home and stuff like that. We used to home, do home bartending quite a lot. So, at the end of the day, like, we started working in, in, in cocktail bars and it felt like, oh, this might be what I want to do after I quit flying. So and like then, that. basically, we quit flying decided mm. to come back to home and open up a cocktail bar. Wow. Yeah. I love that you took that dream very seriously. You were like, I enjoy cocktails, so <laughs> yep. can I make it mine at some yep. point? Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, mm. it's it's actually, to us, it's pretty similar to flying because it's a lot of uh, interactions between people mm. and uh, it's, it's Cocktails is not just about the drink itself, it's about connections as well. So, True. Yeah. yeah. And then because the timing suits us as well, so we were like, okay, okay. let's try to do that. Hey, and I feel like you have kind of provided the perfect space for connecting mm-hmm. over here. So maybe you want to tell us about the idea behind Remedy? So uh, the name Remedy came about because uh, we wanted a place where people come in and feel like they are healed, like they feel slightly better in some way. It doesn't matter what. Maybe like you're having a bad day and just talking to us, talking to the bartender, it's like mm-hmm. talking to a friend, a close friend that will, that's willing to listen and then wow. it makes you feel better. Or maybe it's our drinks that makes you feel better. Or maybe it's our playlist that you like and that makes you feel better and you walk out feeling slightly better. And that's the whole aim of the place. Wow, that's yeah. a beautiful message, really. <laughs> I mean, from my opinion, uh, the vibe of the place, mm-hmm. as soon as you walk in, that's already like a healing. That's already a remedy. <laughs> Thank you. And I love all the factors that come into it. Um, so when it comes to the cocktails, to the mm-hmm. menus, what is your inspiration? What is your focus? We would basically focus on classic cocktails because um, there's not a lot of bars in Malaysia that does that. So uh, we do include some of our specials, like our house specials and uh, creative cocktails so that uh, basically our bartenders get a a place where they can express their uh, creativity. But at the the same time, we try to focus on classic cocktails so that... um, uh, people get to know like what really is like cocktails because mm. nowadays there's so many creative stuff and people like you go to a bar they might say oh this is basically twisted from like an aviation yeah. but you don't actually know what the original aviation tastes like yeah so we try to um do classic cocktails and slightly, sometimes slightly alter the the ratios of things mm. to make it suit uh, the modern palette more. So like sometimes uh, following like the 
the traditional or the classic way to uh, to the ingredients, it it might make the drink slightly sweeter than what you would like. Mm. So we try to find the perfect balance. And to be honest, like we we feel like uh, class uh, like cocktails are still blooming in Malaysia. It's mm. it's uh, a lot of people actually feel kind of intimidated to step into a cocktail bar because you are somehow expected to have some kind of knowledge. Yeah. So I've had a lot of feedbacks where, where like my friends around mm. me, they, they, they have no idea what, what a cocktail is. They've never tried it before. And it seems like it's an intimidating place for them. So we want to we wanna break that barrier and we want to try to uh, educate people, like let let the let uh customers who've never tried a cocktail before mm. learn about classic cocktail. Now that you mention it, I feel like it is intimidating. It's like going into yeah. Starbucks and having to choose like all these you know yep. variations with, and then like I don't really know, I just want a simple cocktail, a- a exactly. simple latte. And yeah. now you're hitting me with all these, you know, fancy terms. names. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah. So I see I see your Because point. to be honest, some ingredients of cocktails even if you use the most basic, simple English to try to put it across, it's still very difficult to explain. It's kind of difficult to, to, to try to order without knowledge. And then, and like, people don't want to end up looking like a, like, like a fool kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, still, so we, we try to um, assist and then basically put everything in the most simple form so that people are able to understand more you and your husband jason mm-hmm. ivy and jason kind of duo yeah <laughs> uh, who opened this lovely place i want to know more about the process who is in charge of what you seem to have a lot of knowledge about cocktail i would say basically um our aim at our bar is kind of different from others mm. uh in a lot of bars you would have service stuff on the floor, running the floor. Yeah. And then you will have bartenders. But here we try to basically um, be able to do both. We we want our bartenders to be able to run the floor, mm-hmm. to talk to our customers, to connect with them, and at the same time, uh, be able to make drinks, make good drinks. So uh, so you understand like both ways. Yeah. You understand the struggles of a bartender and you understand the struggles of a floor staff as well. But that takes a lot of training at the same time because you're expected to do both mm. but I think at the end of the day it's, it's good so basically uh, me and my husband uh, when it's needed we go into the bar when we're needed outside we're outside so it's we're not fixed okay he is more towards I would say um, he he manages a lot of the uh, all the stocks all the bottles all the brands all the suppliers okay. it's all him Good. Yeah. Um. Want to talk more about the decor of the place? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say the decor of the place is basically inspired by class- classic cocktails, and we want to go back in time. As you can yeah. see, like we chose a very classic color, mm. which is very difficult to um to play with. Yes. Yes. Uh, what would you call this maroon? Not more, it, no, it's, it's pretty. It's different shades of just red, but uh, okay. just remedy red. Let's just call yeah. it that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without our designer friend as well. So, um, basically, they had a team. We, it's our friend, and we, they had a team of people doing it. And oh. um, we basically told them we want to go back in time. It's like the 60s, 70s. With our playlist as well, we try to focus on that. We basically play like retro music, oh, oh, all, like throughout the night. So it's basically like going back in time, like from the menu to the music to the deck. Yeah, it's all giving yeah uh, old times, but like with a with a hint of of nowadays. Like you know, mm-hmm. I look at the furniture; it's slightly modern, but the place gives vintage. Yeah, like it's just it's really lovely. Mix. It, it's basically a uh, our designer actually wanted to make it um, modern and classic mm. at the same time. So there's like features of different 
modern stuff and classics. So yeah, but I think they did a really good job with that. It actually turned out to be even nicer than the the, the three D pictures that they oh, were producing. Okay. So so yeah. <laughs> well, um, I want to talk a bit more about the marketing. So I would say most of the marketing we've been doing it ourselves, okay. and uh, because initially when we first started opening up, uh, we didn't want to over market it because um, we don't want like an influx of customers and then we are not able to handle that that kind of volume so um, we basically did our marketing ourselves and try to uh, maintain the customer flow and then basically uh, yeah and so pretty much I would say uh, the photography and stuff yeah. is basically done by my sister because she she's a professional photographer. Wow, so lovely. she helps with that as well. Okay. Yeah. It's like an in-house operation, I would say. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Of. What would you say is the way to keep up with the trends these days? I would say actually different like we, we choose certain platforms mm. to to do our marketing because we realize like uh on certain platforms, it might not be your uh, target customer. Yeah. So uh, there are certain uh, social media platforms that we uh, focus on. And um, as for keeping in trend, like we sometimes we do reels that are in trend, stuff like that, okay. that, that are able to uh, attract more customers, stuff like that. But that hasn't been easy, definitely. Like trying mm. to reproduce it yourself and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. quite competitive yeah. uh, these days when yeah. it comes to the presence online. Mm-hmm. But it always comes back to the traditional, you know, organic kind of marketing. So people, when they come here, I mean, I personally want to like go tell every person I know there is this bar, you guys got to come and check it to, out. To be honest, a lot of marketing has been done through word of mouth, I would say, mm. definitely mm. by mm. our regulars and stuff. I would say, uh, especially on weekdays, most of our customers are regular customers, like around the area, so okay. that you don't have to go so far into KL and then you can get a drink, a quality cocktail, just maybe down the road, you can actually walk home kind of thing. Yeah. So there's a lot of neighborhood customers. You truly are the remedy for this neighborhood to, to have you know a bar <laughs> for them. Uh, sometimes people like <laughs> drive by okay. and then they see the building and then like, Look up and then, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> there's just this blue thing that stands out. So people actually like just walk up when when they, they see it. I want to ask one more question. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think sets this bar apart from other bars? I would say it's the people. It's the people in it that, that actually cares. And then uh, we want we actually want you to come in and feel like you're at home. Our regular customers, we basically come in. We greet them by name. We know where they stay. Like I have been to houses of my regular customers and oh. they ended up becoming friends. So it kind of feels like you're coming home to drink and it's their second home kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just the fancy part of your house. Yeah. It's decorated in this. Yeah. You, you basically have a bar <laughs> at your house kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, it... We want to treat customers more like friends mm. and make them feel really comfortable. Wow. So uh, I think the most important thing will be the people. Okay. Yeah. 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 Lovely. Uh, as a person who I started this house fairly newly or like maybe your first F&B mm-hmm. project, yep. I would say, um, what advice would you give to someone like you a couple of years ago who's just like, is interested in the idea, think about the idea, mm-hmm. but is kind of scared to jump into it, what advice would you give? I would say do a lot of research, market research, stuff like that. And when you feel like you've done enough preparation, you will be confident enough to just do it. At that moment, you will be like, okay, I think I can do this. Okay. Yeah. But without without doing enough homework and, and research and stuff like that, and without the adequate knowledge, it will be quite difficult mm. to have that kind of confidence and say, yeah. okay, let's do it. Let's let's just open up a random bar at a random neighborhood kind of thing. Yeah. But you just got to do a lot of 
preparation be- be- before actually committing mm. to something like this. Love the advice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, um, let's see. Is there is there like a favorite quote that you have with you in your mind? Hmm. Favorite quote? I would say when it comes mm. to business, uh, you just gotta you just gotta push through. Like things <clears throat> might be difficult at this moment in time, mm. Mm. but you just gotta push through it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like when you look back, everything just seems oh it was fine yeah 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 but sometimes we we kind of focus a lot on the uh, tiny little details with and and we get caught in this moment but you just gotta tell yourself it's gonna be okay you just push through i just want to see if there's anything more that you would like to add about the bar about yourself i would say just come to remedy mm-hmm. and try our drinks and then uh, you might like it Okay. And you might fit, you might find your second home here. You're yeah. Sure, you they they were sure like that. <laughs> it's definitely a remedy. I Literally. hope I hope the name <laughs> the name does its work. Yeah. Like we do we 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 try to fulfill what the name says basically. That's like a motive, you know, for yeah. for everyone. Like definitely. that's what we're working for a remedy. That's mm-hmm. So beautiful. Yeah. Well, so nice having you. Thank Ivy. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And that wraps up another episode of Gastro Gurus, where the flavors of life come to play. Today, we journeyed through the extraordinary world of our F&B heroes, discovering the passion and creativity that fuels the vibrant culinary landscape. We hope their stories have inspired you, tantalized your taste buds, and maybe even sparked a culinary adventure of your own. A big thank you to our amazing guest, Ivy Gap, for being here today. And of course, to you, our listeners, for joining us at the table of exploration and discovery. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to Gastro Gurus wherever you listen to your podcasts so you never miss out on our next culinary expedition. We'd love to hear from you as well. Share your thoughts and maybe tell us about your own food experiences and discoveries. See you on the next episode. 